Hey YouTube, so uh, I noticed over the last few nights that my heater uh, would go through the usual sounds and routine, but it seemed like either cold air or no air was coming out of the ducts. So, got my um, infrared heat thermometer, I guess. Um, there's just no hot air coming out of the ducts. So, I went to my let's see, RPJ2, uh, it's labeled comfort maker from Snyder General. Um, I couldn't find any LEDs flashing, anything like that. This didn't really help me too much. Um, it was only after some Googling and kind of piecing together message boards and that sort of thing um, did I realize it was probably, uh, with the symptoms I had, uh, the igniter. It's an electric igniter. There's no pilot um, with this system. So I started by unscrewing the top so I could remove this panel. Um, so I, I turned it off for now because the fan's really loud. Uh, if you've already messed around with your system, you probably know that by now. Um, there was the faint whiff of gas and the nothing uh, while the fan went the whole time. Uh, so again, no, no heat source, um, no pilot. Uh, there's no visible pilot since it's electric. And you can't really tell anything because it is very dark inside the system. So this was my starting point, and again, um, <clears throat> there's this fellow here, and that guy there. Um, I wasn't sure what any of that was. This, um, from my guess, and there's another something here too. Uh, one of those has got to be the uh, flame sensor, the heat sensor. And, uh, sorry, it's kind of gross down here. Um, the system will only continue once the, um, not pilot, but the initiation sequence um, has started to where it senses the heat is on and it's not going to flood your home with uh, natural gas. Um, the electric igniter, um, again there's no pilot which I'm sure is a lot safer and this is similar to my dryer which had the same exact issue um, is right here. You can see this is where it connects, this is where it protrudes into the system and uh, that kind of spiral thing, which is different than a lot of the tutorials that I watched, is in the way of the flame there, which of course ignites when the system starts. Um, so what we have to do to troubleshoot that is um, remove this connector. I've already loosened this up. It's kind of a pain, but just like any connector, um, I think I might have even used a flathead to kind of pry it off a little bit. That big sausage fingers. Um, the only thing retaining it Sorry for the wiggliness, uh, is this flathead screw right here. It's a little loose because I already loosened it, um, already investigated it, and was happy that this was a simple um, fix needed for this system. So you unscrew it. There is a notch. Um, be careful the screw doesn't fall into the system. We don't want that either. Uh, to prevent that, just pull it away so that it still hangs on a couple threads. Of the screw and you can see there's a notch into that metal plate these pieces are very sharp so be very careful um, and of course unplug the system before you work on this so once that comes out again you need to pull it away from it you can see that notch and then straight up uh, if you're not sure be very careful that you don't touch any of the surface of this igniter but you can see that this is the part and I'm going to put this on a clean white table uh, so we can see and diagnose this completely. So here's the part outside of the heater, um, sorry for the weird lighting. Uh, do not touch this area. Here's the connector you can see up close. Pretty simple there. Um, now a visual inspection by itself will show that little burnout spot right there. So right away we know that it's bad. Um, I did see on another, another message board uh, and it did warn that you may not experience these symptoms um, every time. So you can get your cool, I have this really expensive uh, free 
voltometer here. Um, you set it to that setting right there for the ohms. Um, this is just a resistor, just like any light bulb or any uh, electric igniter. Put these contacts in here. You see there's one hole resistant because there's nothing completing the circuit. And that doesn't change once we put that. It should resist it because it's complete, but once it burns out, it is not complete. Um, what I did to test that, also with my voltometer, because I never trust these Harbor Freight ones, um, is I just put a light bulb up to it, and you can see exactly how this should function um, resisting that electricity. So, my next step was to find out what um, part number this was uh, without jumping through the hoops of maybe recovering a manual based off the model number of that heater. Um, I found out that these may only last four to seven years. So for my 91 manufactured heater, it's probably not the original one. You can see there is a stamped part number on that metal sleeve. Um, what I did then is I was able to make out Carbo 0206DC. Um, I was able to find an Amazon page for exactly that listing. And what I found here was uh, this part number, which I cross-referenced with the Google IG-101. So IG-101 is the original part number, which reference, reference with uh, this maybe proprietary or replacement, ERIG-101, which was shown on that original one. So if you Google the part number you're actually looking for, um, you'll find this aftermarket deal, which is a little more expensive. I saw the range from kind of $15 to $75 if you needed to install right away um, through my rabbit hole of searching. I found, I'll show you the exact one that I ended up buying. This one for $18.30. It's this part right here. It comes with kind of a somewhat universal clip selection. And you can see that that's exactly what our looks like. So I ordered it. Um, I'll go ahead and install it exactly the way we uninstalled the other one, being very carefully, being very careful that we don't touch the um, heating element there. We'll re-screw it in, we'll test it, and we'll be rocking and rolling with night, nice warm air again. Good? All right, so I got my part in the mail today from Amazon. In there came our part. Remember not to touch the black part. And a bunch of different fittings. So we need to see which one came off our old one, which we have right here. We'll also need the screw for the new part because it didn't come with a screw. <coughs> So we can see the fitting here is the same as hopefully one of the ones in my hand. It's not very hard to do. We have the same one. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that at all? Is it focused? All right. So the next step is just crimping this new one with the bare fittings ready to go to the new piece here. And we just do that by sliding them in like that. And it's just a resistor, so it doesn't matter if it's positive, negative. We shove it in there, put it in, screw it in, and we'll show you the video of that next. Don't touch that. All right, um, something to note, uh, the screw location, there's two holes, even on this somewhat universal part. Um, I took it out of the top hole. I'm going to put it back into the top hole of the new part. Alright, so now that I checked the position of the old one, uh, where the screw goes in, because there's two holes on this one, um, it was on what's going to be the top hole. So I just made sure to put in the same one, thread it a bit so it doesn't fall down into the broiler or where the, the fire starts shooting out. Um, and then we're just going to insert it just like the last one. So Jackie is helping us this time. Let's say hi, Jackie. Hi. My girlfriend. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to put this in first. I'll worry about plugging it in later. Can you see that at all? Mm -hmm. Be careful not to touch this against anything. We don't want to shorten the life on this already. It's a temporary part. 
those in there just to suspend. It's down in there, didn't touch anything. Happy about that. And then you can see that metal notch, the same one that we pulled it out of. It needs to align and lay flat before we put that screw in. There's a screwdriver somewhere up here. That's the same flathead, just because that's what it had and that's what it's gonna have again. Again, we're using that screw, which is just fine. And if I can align it in the hole. No pressure, all of YouTube's watching. Trying to look cool in front of the girlfriend. Nothing's lining up. Just waiting for the screw to fall down into the broiler part. You want to show if you can get that um, you can see it's down below there right in the way of where the gas is gonna spew out so it's gonna pass through that element I don't know if this gets really hot or what but ignite it and we'll be playing with fire I guess All right, and then lastly, um, I'm coming here. Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, I mean, you should know to just plug it in. I don't know if you can see it. That's awkward. Yes. Okay. So just plug it in. It only clicks one way. Make sure that the leads are in this connector. It only goes on one way. It's clicked. Make sure these wires are tucked in with the rest of them and out of the way of all the fire, flame, especially with these little paper tags. Good enough. And then don't forget to put the door back on the heater. You can come back. This fella right here. And however they have your sketchy screws to hold your door back on. <laughs> 